Welcome everyone to the next Gen4 International Forum webinar presentation. Today's presentation is on the Allegro Experimental Gas Cooled Fast Reactor Project by Dr. Blavlosky. Doing today's introduction is Patricia Pavier. Dr. Pavier is the Technical Group Manager of the Radiological Materials Group of the Nuclear Sciences Division at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. She's also the chair of the Gen4 International Forum Education and Training Task Force. Patricia? Thank you. Good morning, uh, Bert, uh, Good morning, everybody. So we have uh, Dr. Ladislav Belosky with us today. He works at the UGV West, uh, close to Prague, Czech Republic, as a senior engineer. And he's, uh, he has over 30 years' experience in nuclear energy research. He graduated from the Czech Technical University of Prague in 1988 as a master scientist in mechanical engineering for nuclear industry. And he received also his PhD in 1993 at the same university for modeling of light water reactor fuel behavior in the accident. Since 2011, the main area of his research activities focuses on the development of Gen 4 reactors. Dr. Belovsky participates in the development of the helium cooled fast reactor Allegro in the frame of the International Association V4 G4 Center of Excellence in the following areas the design and the safety of the reactor and the related R&D focused on safety helium technology and material research his background in the Czech Republic as well as in France in the period between 1988 to 2011 is mainly characterized by activities in the development and application of computer codes for modeling of light water reactor fuel behavior in design basis and severe accident conditions. So thank you so much, Ladislav, and I give you the floor. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. I am Ladislav Bielowski and, and will give you details on the development of the demonstration, small demonstration unit of a gas cool fast reactor. The uh, work started, uh, uh, the work on Allegro started in France and then it was uh, passed to Central European countries of the Visegrad 4 uh, group. Uh, uh, I will tell you uh, something about the motivation, uh, why Allegro, about its philosophy. Uh, I will speak about the recent developments and that touch also the R&D, which, which is now underway on Allegro. And we'll conclude uh, 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 speaking about our plans and perspectives. Uh, as there is no gas-cooled fast reactor running in the world today, uh, there is a need to build first a small demonstration unit, of course, just to establish the confidence in the GFR technology. Uh, the uh, goals of the demonstration unit are listed here uh, on this slide. Light. Uh, and uh, are uh, uh, these four ones uh, as uh, users of the potential large gas cooled fast reactors uh, for industry uh, expect to have a safe large industrial unit uh, using uh, a high temperature uh, 
uh, resistant uh, refractory fuel, the uh, demonstration unit uh, sh should be used uh, just to uh, uh, verify, validate and test this type of fuel. To demonstrate that uh, we are able to have uh, control over the reactor to prove that it works safely and uh, 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 get uh, uh, experience with the uh, gas cooled uh, react gas cooled fast reactor related technologies which are associated with the refueling with the with the helium purification and other technologies and of course, uh, one very important part will be to prove that uh, uh, the integration of the, all the individual features uh, 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 works well uh, in a representative system. Uh, one of the major points is to show that uh, small GFR is safe. So uh, uh, we will have to prove uh, that and to validate uh, and, and provide to the uh, nuclear reactor community uh, a safety reference framework. Currently, for this moment, there is no power conversion system uh, planned uh, for this demonstration unit. Um, last year, uh, my colleague from CEA, Dr. Alfredo Vazel, gave a webinar on the big GFR uh, 2400 uh, preconceptual design. Uh, per, uh, prepared at, in France at the CEA. Uh, Allegro will touch all the challenges concerning the uh, high temperature resistant fuel safety, fuel handling and so on. But there is one, uh, there is one very important point uh, in addition to all these blue ones, which uh, insists in the use of, uh, of uh, currently existing fuel for the driver core, which is based on the current uh, SFR technology coming from the uh, sodium cooled fast reactor. I will explain it on the now, on the next on the uh, next slides. The philosophy of Allegro is to, to 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 start in the following way: as we don't have for this moment uh, validated the high temperature resistant uh, fuel being able to withstand the uh, target temperatures of the coolant around 800 degrees C, we will start with, uh, the, with loading the driver uh, core uh, composed of the, let's say, ordinary uh, oxide fuel in stainless steel uh, tubes. Uh, the design coming from the Phoenix sodium cooled fast reactor in hexagonal geometry and due to the limitations of the stainless steel we will have to limit the core outlet temperatures to something uh, uh, slightly above 500 degrees C. Uh, when having in the future uh, uh, first uh, pins or fuel assemblies com uh, of the uh, high temperature uh, resistant refractory fuel composed of the uh, carbide mixed fuel in uh, uh, silicon carbide based tubes. 
we will uh, load uh, one up to six uh, of these fuel assemblies into the prepared positions and irradiate. And uh, these test uh, fuel assemblies will be able to reach the target temperatures, the target coolant temperatures at the outlet being in the range of roughly 800 degrees C, uh, thanks to reduced flow rate uh, going through these uh, uh, test fuel assemblies. Uh, after mixing with the uh, coolant from the driver core uh, fuel assemblies, the average core outlet temperature of the primary uh, helium will be uh, again uh, limited to roughly 530 degrees C. And when having the refractory fuel uh, well proved for uh, full scope uh, operation, then the final full refractory core will be loaded and Allegro will be able to be operated at the target temperature around 800 degrees C. It means that all the technology around um, which can't be replaced uh, must be designed from the very beginning uh, for the high temperature option. Uh, this slide uh, shows the history of the development of the demonstration unit, which started uh, roughly in 2002 in France at CEA. Uh, our French colleagues first uh, prepared uh, uh, preconceptual design of a small so-called experimental technology demonstration reactor, uh, 50 megawatt thermal, and uh, uh, this was available in 2008. Uh, the next stage, which uh, came one year after, uh, was characterized by increased power and uh, in fact very similar layout. Details will follow on the next slides. Uh, the main characteristics of uh, these versions are uh, the following. The uh, ETDR was composed of one primary loop and uh, water on the secondary side. Allegro had two, has two primary loops also with the water on the secondary side and as it was realized that gas uh, would be more uh, appropriate uh, to be used in a fast reactor, then uh, another version uh, was uh, uh, introduced by our CA colleagues, which uh, was characterized with a turbo machinery in the, in the uh, secondary circuit to enhance the safety. Uh, in 2009-2010, uh, this uh, project was passed to Central European uh, countries uh, from the Visegrad 4 group and uh, since then we are continuing in the development. First, uh, a memorandum of understanding was uh, signed between research organizations and industrial companies uh, from Hungary, uh, uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia and in uh, 2013 an umbrella association so-called V4G4, Visegrad 4 for Generation 4 Center of Excellence was, uh, was established uh, in Slovakia. This is a, a legal person under which the development 
uh, of uh, Allegro is now being performed. There are uh, four core members uh, uh, and two associated members from France, CA, and uh, the Research Center Rzesz, Centrum Viscomo in, in Czech language from Czech Republic. Uh, this slide indicates the, the, the first version of Allegro at the time called the ETDR, which was characterized by one uh, primary circuit, reactor pressure vessel, coaxial piping into the gas water heat exchanger. And these three uh, coaxial pipings are emergency, uh, emergency cooling uh, circuits for the case when uh, when the cooling, the ordinary cooling through the secondary circuit is no not possible. Uh, the philosophy uh, used and taken by our French colleagues was to move quickly forward and to use all the possible technology which is available in the world. This is why the helium water heat exchanger was uh, proposed just to speed up the, the development. This technology is being used uh, in Japan in the HDTR uh, graphite moderated helium cooled reactor. Uh, the uh, parameters of this reactor uh, were in the first stage going slightly over 500, 500 degrees C when using the uh, oxal, oxide fuel based uh, in stainless steel tubes uh, for the driver core and uh, uh, rough slightly above 800 degree C when using the full ceramic uh, core. The uh, layout of the facility can be seen here. Uh, many details were developed at the time uh, some of them only in uh, indicative way. Uh, 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 some uh, technologies were developed not at all or very roughly. Uh, in uh, the meantime, uh, our French colleagues realized that two main circuits, two main primary circuits, two, main pri two uh, uh, loops uh, in the primary circuit would be a, a more safer, would be a safer uh, uh, solution. And uh, uh, to improve the neutron economy, uh, uh, the core was made larger and the power increased from 50 to 75, 75 megawatts thermal. So the Allegro, which uh, was and is uh, the, the base, the Allegro uh, preconceptual design prepared by CEA in 2009, is can be seen on this slide. We have here in the central part the reaction pressure vessel, the two primary loops with the helium water uh, heat exchangers. Here in the bottom we have the main blowers. Uh, here we have three decay heat removal DHR heat exchangers in the top using the chimney uh, effect uh, 
in, in the case of primary circul uh, natural circulation. Uh, here you can see the decay heat removal blowers and this red uh, red uh, component is an optional optional heat exchanger gas gas heat exchanger which uh, uh, was proposed uh, to uh, to use the uh, uh, prime the, the heat from the primary circuit uh, for technological proposals. Uh, here you see the small demonstration unit Allegro, and on the right side the large uh, indus industrial uh, reactor for generation of electricity, as uh, uh, demanded by EDF uh, uh, nearly 20 years ago. Uh, Dr. Vasil last year gave. Uh, a webinar on uh, uh, on the uh, GFR uh, technology and uh, spoke in detail about this uh, 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 this uh, target unit. Today we we see that the progress is moving towards smaller reactors probably the market will demand smaller uh, units maybe our target unit will not be a big industrial gfr but a smaller uh, small or medium or small modular reactor with roughly 200 megawatts thermal uh, regardless of, of this, uh, we have to prove the safety and viability of the GFR technology through the development and commissioning of the Allegro reactor. Here are parameters of the uh, Allegro preconceptual design. Uh, by CEA from 2009, very similar to the ETDR, uh, the uh, option with the driver core, core inlet temperature 260 and uh, average core outlet temperature of the helium coolant 530. In case of the full refract refractory core, we will reach uh, temperatures around uh, around 800-850 degrees C are planned with 400 degrees C uh, inlet temperature to the core. Here you can see the secondary circuit uh, composed of water and the secondary circuits uh, of the decay heat removal loops consisting also from water. Uh, it is important to say that the power density of both uh, concepts is around 100 megawatts per cubic meter, which is uh, roughly uh, well more than one order of magnitude, may, may be, uh, maybe 20 times more than in graphite moderated helium cooled reactors like HTTR or others. Uh, as the GFRs were uh, being developed uh, since early 60s, uh, the time uh, the success was limited by a poor uh, safety of the proposed concepts. Uh, there was in fact a very big trouble with loss of coolant accidents. There was practically no uh, way to avoid core melting. To 
overcome this uh, deficiency of uh, gas cooled fast reactors our french colleagues introduce a concept of a so-called guard vessel so an, a closed envelope around the primary circuit which, which would enable uh, a so-called back pressure in the case when uh, the primary coolant uh, uh, escapes from the primary circuit uh, just to assure uh, uh, pressure uh, in the in the uh, breached primary circuit and around uh, well above the atmospheric pressure. In this case, when the inventory of the primary circuit escapes into the guard vessel, the back pressure uh, stabilizes at around three to four bars, which reduces substanti substantially the pumping work of the active uh, systems of the of the blowers and so on uh, another option is to inject uh, uh, another gas for example nitrogen into the uh, primary circuit just to increase the back pressure from three or four bars to roughly 10 or more just to make the coolant more dense and provide uh, conditions suitable for the natural convection. Uh, this option all to um, planned in Allegro CA 2009 was not fully available the safety in this concept was assured by active systems using forced convection and uh, this contradict this was in contradict with the venera and uh, and iea and uh, gif uh, requirements uh, uh, of uh, safety just to use uh, passive systems uh, as much as possible. Here uh, it is to note that the internal concrete superstructures of course are not shown in the figure just to make the primary circuit visible. Uh, this is a detail of the DK, DK heat removal heat exchanger which uh, which shows the way of the hot helium rising uh, through through the coaxial uh, decay heat removal loop and then going down through the uh, uh, through the uh, 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 water-cooled uh, piping of the heat exchanger but unfortunately in this case the gas is obliged to pass through the decay heat removal blower which uh, represents uh, uh, a very large obstacle for the flow in case of natural circulation so uh, this is one of the features which had to be uh, uh, modified and uh, uh, next versions uh, uh, overcame this uh, this problem and pro another prob problem here is the use of the uh, of the u tube uh, concept where the cold water first uh, uh, continues from the top to bottom and then back uh, uh, in case of troubles with the cooling on the water side bubbles uh, could uh, uh, could uh, uh, appear which would cause instabilities in uh, in this uh, component again uh, the uh, uh, 
this nice piece of work will have to be uh, redesigned just to avoid uh, this potential source of, uh, of uh, instabilities in case of uh, uh, troubles with the flow on the water side of the DHR system. Uh, here, this uh, this uh, 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 slide shows uh, two types of valves uh, used in the in the system. Here, in in the bottom part, you see the 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 cross the longitudinal cross section of the primary heat exchanger with the blower on the bottom side with the motor here attached and here at this at this uh, 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 location uh, there is a set of uh, six uh, disc valves which are uh, open when the primary blower is blowing and providing flow and when the, when this blower is stopped these these uh, elements uh, just close uh, the openings and there is no flow through the uh, uh, primary loops uh, this part this this upper part shows a similar uh, type of uh, check valves, disc check valves in the DK heat removal uh, heat exchanger. Uh, these valves assure no flow through the DHR loops uh, during the reactor operation. Uh, here you see the, uh, the core, the first core layout, the, the driver core, uh, which uh, will uh, be used for commissioning of Allegro, the yellow uh, yellow uh, uh, hexagons are the uh, MOX fuel assemblies, uh, the red and black are control and shutdown assemblies, and the and the green. Uh, assemblies are the positions where the experimental uh, fuel assemblies with containing the refractory fuel can be loaded. Here you see the parameters of the, the, the target parameters at that time of the large industrial GFR, uh, CEA, uh, as proposed by CA uh, in uh, 2005 or 6. And here are uh, the parameters of Allegro, which uh, should uh, be as close as, as possible uh, to this large industrial unit. I speak, uh, I mean, uh, especially the uh, the uh, fluents uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the uh, the neutron flux, which is quite comparable to the big GFR. The fuel cycle length was chosen to be. 660 years and uh, no core load was uh, assumed. Just uh, the cores would be re replaced one by one. Here is uh, uh, here is a more general uh, figure which shows the core which we were speaking about just on the previous slide with the reflector assemblies, shielding assemblies, and the intermediate 
a shielding made of stainless steel, which fills the space between the hexagonal uh, shape uh, composed by the core, uh, reflector and shielding, and the core barrel. And here uh, is in fact the downcomer and and uh, uh, around the is the uh, reactor pressure vessel. Here you see the details on the driver core and on the refractory core. As you can see in the first core, there would be a, really a lot of stainless steel. So the stainless steel is uh, one of the limiting factors concerning the outlet core temperature just because the uh, melting temperature of stainless steel uh, used for this uh, these structure elements is some something above 1300 degrees C so this slide shows details uh, of the mox fuel pins and uh, assemblies uh, very similar to the Phoenix uh, design. <clears throat> and uh, this slide uh, indicates uh, the uh, details of the refractory fuel. Here is to point out that, uh, that we still count with mixed carbide fuel pellets located in, in uh, silicon carbide based uh, tubes. It is one of the concepts, one of the technologies today uh, planned also to be used in uh, PWRs or even sodium cooled uh, fast reactors. So our colleagues in the world work hard on uh, this and uh, this technology one day should be uh, able as a basis for the Allegro refractory uh, fuel uh, to be loaded into the uh, uh, into the into these uh, three or six experimental positions to be irradiated and uh, uh, tested. Uh, one of the important features of the experimental ceramic fuel assemblies is thermal shielding, which uh, will, which would, which is designed to protect the neighboring uh, driver core uh, oxide based fuel assemblies using stainless steel as stru structure material, material. So, here inside the uh, uh, refractory fuel assemblies, the outlet core temperature, outlet fuel assembly temperature would be roughly 800 degrees C and the outlet coolant temperature from the neighboring uh, driver core fuel assemblies would be, as uh, I said previously, something uh, roughly above 500 degrees C. And after mixing of these, uh, of these two uh, flows, so rough, maximum six uh, experimental fuel assemblies with 800 and something degree C and 500 and something from the driver core fuel assemblies. The, the resulting uh, coolant, average coolant temperature just above the core would be again uh, something above 500 degree C. Uh, the safety is uh, the is one of the of the most important aspects of uh, Allegro. 
This is the DHR strategy, the strategy, strategy to remove the decay heat removal in case of uh, uh, loss of flow accidents, loss of coolant accidents. You can see, uh, you can see uh, in case of protected accidents when uh, the uh, reactor is sac successfully uh, uh, shut down that first the cooling uh, will be uh, provided by the primary blowers when possible. When not possible, the active, uh, uh, active uh, the, uh, systems in the decay heat removal loops will be used to uh, remove the decay heat uh, by forced convection from the core and uh, and uh, the natural convection is planned to be used only uh, when uh, the uh, nominal uh, in, in pressurized condition. So here uh, in this whole domain of loss of coolant accidents with uh, a primary coolant pressure below the nominal one, uh, the design relies on forced convection as the, as the main phenomenon to be used for the removal of the decay heat, which is of course which is of course of course not good. Uh, with what concerns the unprotected transients, it is similar to, to other fast reactors like SFRs. Uh, some, uh, uh, of course, uh, the GFR is characterized by pressurized coolant. Uh, unprotected transients uh, associated with complete loss of uh, coolant from the primary circuit, sh circuit should be practically eliminated. This will be an issue uh, in the design of uh, any GFR included Allegro. Here is the last, last uh, uh, version of uh, Allegro as proposed by our French colleagues at CEA in 2010, which was patented. The goal of this proposal was to improve the safety, to uh, assure cooling uh, in any uh, uh, protected uh, transients, uh, pressurized or depressurized. The idea is based on the use of the turbo machinery in the secondary circuit, this time filled with gas, helium, for example. Here you see, you see a, a <clears throat> gas turbine, helium turbine, helium compressor, and the main idea is to to, to, to connect the turbo machinery in the secondary circuit with the primary blower. It means after shutdown, the, uh, the primary blowers would be temporarily operated by, thanks to the, to the mechanical iner inertia, of the turbo machinery and thanks to the thermal inertia uh, it would be operated for a certain time analysis show up to 50,000 seconds uh, can uh, the, the primary blower could be could the rundown of the primary blowers uh, could be extended up to roughly 5,000 seconds which is sufficient to evacuate the decay heat uh, in the initial periods when it is uh, uh, large. 
Here we can say that this uh, represents a kind of a passive way of the decay heat removal, but it is uh, uh, technically quite very complicated to be assured as there are no there is no such technology available in the world which could be uh, um, used to assure safety of Allegro and another uh, and another uh, issue would be to uh, pass the, the shaft through the uh, uh, closed envelope through the guard vessel, uh, which encloses the primary circuit. So, <clears throat> but this is just one of potential ways how to uh, improve safety of Allegro. Here we can see that uh, the uh, mechanical and thermal inertia uh, can uh, save the, the core even in case of a large break loca and even when only one turbo machinery is uh, running in uh, uh, the system. To peak cladding temperatures over time when both uh, turbo machineries are available and the peak cladding temperature uh, when only one turbo machinery is available. So the peak cladding temperatures are quite, quite well, very uh, well below the uh, 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 stainless steel melting temperature and uh, temperatures when the fuel can depressurize. Here are listed the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, solution. Uh, it is technically very complicated and uh, one of the most important aspects is when the turbo machinery stops in passive operation, it cannot restart again. <clears throat> uh, this slide lists the open issues uh, of the preconceptual design, uh, which co concerns the operational conditions. Uh, as you know now, there is uh, water uh, on the secondary side of the primary circuit and also uh, in the secondary side of the uh, decay heat removal circuit. Uh, there is a risk of uh, water ingress through the DHR heat exchanger into the primary coolant. At this moment, we still don't are we still are we are unable to uh, isolate the, the DHR loops from the rest of the of the system and. Uh, there, in case of use of water uh, on the secondary side of the primary circuit, there would be an uncontrolled, un uncontrolled risk of water ingress into the primary circuit of, the, of a fast reactor, which seems to be quite dangerous. Uh, the disc check valves uh, were up to now not tested experimentally and as I mentioned the isolation valves for coaxial piping either DHR or the main uh, piping uh, connecting the reactor pressure vessel and the main heat exchanger are not available. It is also a technical challenge. <clears throat> Other issues are listed here and are associated with the ordinary uh, uh, 
mechanical engineering, uh, but refueling machine uh, uh, does not uh, exist. It, it, it exists no design in the world for this type of technology. Uh, heat shielding above the uh, core, which would uh, isolate uh, the hot flow from the reactor pressure walls is also uh, to be designed, designed and tested. This is also a challenge in energy FR uh, and, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, open issues in accident conditions uh, comes mainly from the stainless steel based fuel assemblies. Uh, the peak cladding temperature in any kind of accident must be well limited, must be, must be limited to temperatures well below this uh, uh, melting temperature of the stainless steel which is a quite technical uh, challenge. So the key word today of uh, the safety of Allegro is to ensure uh, to the core coolability. We could, we could reach it, for example, by also by reducing the power characteristics, the, the, the uh, thermal power, just to uh, to minimize the uh, decay heat, but the irradiation characteristics of algal would then also be, uh, be uh, reduced. Uh, one of the issues is the decay heat removal in passive mode. How to ensure the decay heat removal when there is a station blackout and no uh, uh, active systems available. For example, by uh, promoting the natural circulation in the system, by maximizing the uh, driving force uh, using uh, as high a pressure in the guard vessel as possible. So feasibility uh, study is now running, uh, is now in uh, uh, is now being performed to, to see whether such a large structure can be built and uh, resist uh, to uh, pressures uh, slightly above uh, one megapascal. And of course, uh, the flow resistance local uh, 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 local uh, flow resistance in the decay heat removal system must be uh, minimized. For example, bypassing the DHR blower in nature flow mode. Uh, another, another issue is to provide the decay heat removal uh, heat exchanger resistant to high temperatures. So this is the this is the design based the criterion as set by CEA. It should withstand such high temperatures for more than 30 minutes. Uh, uh, an extensive R&D uh, is now uh, uh, going on on this issue. Uh, In 2010, the activities at CEA were passed to the Central Europe and uh, 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 the association uh, called V4G4 Center of Excellence was established in Slovak Republic with the aim to uh, provide umbrella for further development uh, in, in this part of Europe. The base, the technical base, uh, 
was chosen to be the uh, Allegro CE 2009, which we were speaking about on the previous slides. Uh, and here you see the industrial and, uh, uh, and uh, academic uh, partners uh, in, the, uh, in this association coming from Slovakia, Czech Republic, uh, Hungary and Poland with the responsibilities uh, listed here. And associated members <clears throat> are providing either technical consultancy or, or uh, 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 R&D infrastructure. <clears throat> Here he are the years when these members became associated to V4G4. Uh, the new Allegro V4G4 concept, uh, <clears throat> its goal is to uh, provide a safe uh, concept used based on uh, passive safety and uh, solve all the questionable uh, uh, features of the mechanical engineering which were mentioned concerning uh, concerning uh, the valves heat exchangers and all the uh, GFR related technologies which are not existing up to now, which are a big challenge also to us. Uh, the efforts in, in the uh, Allegro CA 2009 concept were focused on the neutronics of the core, on the fuel and on assuring the core coolability using active systems mainly. And all the remaining uh, auxiliary systems were addressed marginally, which is quite understandable. Our French colleagues uh, wanted to progress fast and to solve the most uh, most uh, important uh, uh, elements of the design. <clears throat> uh, we uh, are, uh, as we, when we reviewed the, this concept, we had to, re we realized that to make uh, the new concept uh, safe and feasible we have to uh, perform uh, we make to make we have to make some important modifications first not only to make it closer to the big gfr concept which today is becoming obsolete due to the due to the trend to smaller units we wanted to remove the water from the secondary circuit just to exclude by design the possibility of criticality due to water when, when uh, uh, <clears throat> ingressing uh, into the primary circuit and maybe one day uh, using the concept which was mentioned uh, uh, using the turbo machinery to provide uh, <clears throat> some inertia for the for the uh, decay heat removal uh, decay heat removal uh, the concept of passive or semi-passive systems is very important for us. We are uh, trying to uh, assure the coolability of the core by passive systems only using the natural circulation of the primary helium as much as possible. Another feature is associated with the oxide 
uh, fuel in the driver uh, assemblies, uh, potentially uh, uh, enriched uranium might be used and replace the mixed oxide fuel. Uh, this is still open. When decided, the Allegro core would have to be larger and just because of the limitation on the concentration of the U235 to less than 20%. The reason is just well known, the <coughs> non-proliferation condition. But in our case, it would mean, it would result in uh, roughly uh, hal um, uh, halving the uh, uh, power density in the core and uh, 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 having the core roughly twice as large. In our case, we have to focus also on the uh, GFR-related and helium-related technology because we have to, uh, we have to provide a really a feasible uh, concept uh, uh, from any uh, aspects we will have to um, provide the solution for all the auxiliary systems, uh, even if uh, 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 even if uh, uh, they can seem to be a routine, as uh, the helium gas storage systems, makeup systems, and so on. But uh, the solution uh, to but the, as the there is not enough space uh, uh, around the primary circuit as there is the guard vessel we will have to touch all these auxiliary systems just to be able to draw the concept and uh, uh, provide a complete solution of this uh, problem. Here is the overview of the time schedule of the development. Here you see just the year 2009-2010, uh, the moment when uh, we, when uh, our French colleagues uh, started the negotiations with the Central European and institutions, 2013, establishment of the V4G4 Center of Excellence, and roughly from 2015, the Allegro development was restarted in Central Europe uh, with the goal to provide the preconceptual design in 2020 and conceptual design in 2025, roughly. Uh, he, here uh, in the box uh, called R&D, uh, I would like to point out the uh, commission of two uh, helium loops, which will be crucial and important for ensuring uh, safe design in case of uh, 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 loss of flow or loss of coolant accidents in passive mode. A helium loop commission in Slovakia, a simple helium loop de dedicated to studies of natural circulation and uh, a more complex loop in Czech Republic, which uh, is going to uh, uh, start its operation this year. Uh, this slide indicates the elements of the design and the, and the, uh, uh, and the uh, design steps, uh, which are characterized by the uh, 
design basis uh, for the reactor and all the systems. It provides the, the input for the design, then uh, safety requirements, uh, design and safety roadmap, and Allegro business plan. Uh, the preliminary design will start with the core and fuel neutronics and uh, simple, uh, simple uh, 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 development of the primary circuit and the associated decay heat removal uh, system. The guard vessel is uh, integral. Uh, part of this process. Of course, the preliminary design will be uh, uh, assessed uh, by analysts to show uh, whether it is compliant with all the VENRA and GIF and IEA uh, requirements. And uh, at this stage, the uh, uh, R&D requirements, the requirements for the associated research and development should be formulated also in this stage. Uh, this is, this is uh, an, uh, an extended version of the previous slide when having the preliminary design already available with proven characteristics. In this case, we can, uh, we can start the development also of uh, the uh, auxiliary systems because we will know the main uh, characteristics of Allegro, which should not uh, change substantially. Uh, here, are, uh, uh, here is shown uh, the progress which was made uh, in uh, recently. Uh, they, these, here is shown here are shown the peak leading temperatures in a small break local aggravated with station blackout. So it means uh, decay heat removal in passive mode in case of uh, one inch uh, loss of coolant accident. Uh, the previous CA 2009 concept uh, reached melting temperatures in the core very uh, quickly. In our case, when the concept of the optimized decay heat removal uh, system using uh, optimized natural circulation using the bypass of the primary blower and in addition the injection of the heavy gas uh, nitrogen for example pressurizing the guard vessel to pressures uh, slightly above 10 bars above 1 megapascal. Uh, the peak loading temperatures are kept well below 800 degrees C, which is uh, a very good result for which we are very happy. At this moment, the, uh, the uh, nitrogen uh, accumulators would send additional flow of nitrogen into the system. <laughs> Here we see uh, a similar uh, uh, picture in case of a large brake loca characterized with uh, fast depressurization. So in, in uh, uh, two, three minutes, the original concept would reach uh, uh, stainless steel melting in the core. Uh, in our case, the introduction of the, uh, of the bypass of the decay heat removal blower would already well prevent the 
uh, melting, melting of stainless steel in the core. And in association with the uh, injection of nitrogen into the core, here individually uh, introduction of bypass and individually introduction of the uh, uh, nitrogen injection into the, into the system. This is the integral. Uh, this is the. These are the peak leading temperatures when both uh, elements are used: the bypass of the DHR blower and the injection of the nitrogen. Here you can see that even if the uh, primary coolant uh, escapes completely from the primary circuit, provided the guard vessel is uh, tight, the core, the peak cladding temperatures in the core would not uh, reach even 1000 degrees C, which is uh, very, very optimistic. Uh, later, in case of a uh, uh, full ceramic core, this would represent a very, very safe behavior of the alloy of uh, uh, such a GFR. Uh, uh, we are, of course, uh, penalized somehow through the use of the uh, driver core using the stainless steel. So this is why we have to introduce very intensive safety systems and this is one of the of the possibilities how to uh, reach the reach the goal uh, <clears throat> the r d uh, needed for allegro is listed here in very very general way we are now working on formulation of uh, detailed uh, items of the or, or details of the R&D items. Uh, of course, the R&D on the safety of the oxide cores uh, is as associated with the system thermal hydraulics, the heat transfer in the <clears throat> in the fuel bundle uh, cooled with helium, for example, which uh, must be proven experimentally, feasibility of the guard vessel, including uh, core catcher issues and so on. Uh, R&D associated with the helium technology, just ordinary, uh, issues similar to those solved by our Japanese and uh, Chinese uh, colleagues uh, in the graphite moderated helium cooled reactors. But in our case, uh, uh, our case uh, completed with, with uh, GFR, purely GFR related uh, systems like fuel handling, instrumentation, and so on. Uh, we realized that, that uh, the computational uh, tools we are using uh, must be validated and we have to uh, be sure about uh, their uh, precision and validation domain. So this is why benchmark activities were uh, running in the last years. Materials qualification of, uh, of all the materials used in the uh, driver core and the refractory fuel assemblies. Uh, R&D concerning the uh, uh, reactor control uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, materials, design, and so on. And here, the thermal barrier barriers is something which is also GFR related, only not, not needed in uh, the uh, uh, graphite moderated reactors. So this is uh, uh, 
what we what we will have to touch uh, and of course when having the fuel elements we will have to provide we'll have to qualify it somewhere uh, in the world uh, in any suitable uh, fast reactor for example as Ember, the future uh, material test reactor in Russian Federation which we hope we'll be able to use in the future. Uh, I'm approaching to the end of the presentation here on the on this slide are shown the uh, elements of the research and development as uh, uh, proposed and partially realized uh, in France at CEA. Something was designed, something was, uh, something was uh, built, uh, but uh, many, many uh, stands and facilities were not put in operation. So we are now going either to use them or or build similar ones in the uh, V4 countries. The, the, the crucial element he is here is just to, to ensure the core coolability in passive uh, mode. Here it is listed, uh, the R&D priorities are listed here on this slide. It, the priorities touch the validation of the DHR approach using both loops, which I mentioned already. Then the feasibility of the guard vessel resistant to elevated pressure to provide driving force for the natural circulation. And of course, uh, 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 elements associated with the heat transfer from wire wrapped uh, rods uh, bundle into prototypic helium, which is still not available in the world. Something was uh, something was performed in air. Of course, there are stands and facilities for this kind of research uh, in, in sodium, but we have to uh, build and uh, test the fuel bundles, fuel assemblies also in helium, just to uh, prove that our compet computational tools uh, predict well the thermal hydraulic thermal hydraulic behavior in the core. Uh, this is the second part of the R&D priorities. Uh, just quickly, uh, feasible and safe nitrogen injection into the reactor pressure vessel. The expansion of, of the nitrogen uh, is associated with with important subcooling of the gas, which could quite embrittle the uh, structures when being touched with this flow. Uh, I spoke about the turbo machinery potentially used in the secondary circuit, but this time not connected uh, uh, by a, a shaft bit, but potentially driven electrically uh, 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 thanks to the electricity generated during the rundown of the system just to avoid passing the shaft through the guard vessel core catcher DK heat removal heat exchanger able to withstand the high temperatures. This heat exchanger, of course, must not fail because this is one of the crucial elements uh, for safety. Valves and so on. Uh, the R&D platforms we have are listed here. Uh, we have two helium loops 
which I hope will uh, provide us data on the uh, nature, natural and or uh, forced uh, circulation in the in the helium uh, system. Uh, there are another helium loops uh, available used for material research in uh, in the prototypical control atmosphere where we have to the possibility to uh, test either out of pile or in pile in a thermal reactor, uh, small coupons in prototyp prototypic atmosphere, seven megapascal and uh, uh, with duped impurities. Uh, there uh, was uh, uh, know-how uh, gained uh, in uh, the uh, helium purification issues recently. We have stands for that helium recovery from uh, the guard vessel atmosphere is one uh, interesting feature of uh, GFRs, which is not uh, associated related to safety, but to the economics of a potential uh, large fleet of GFRs in the future. If when if there would would be a, a important number of uh, helium cooled reactors in the world, then helium we know is a scarce a commodity, uh, not renewable, not, not easily renewable. Uh, it is uh, uh, not cheap. So we started research on uh, its recovery when it leaks from the primary circuit and other technologies into the guard vessel, we would be able to recycle it back to the uh, helium storage tanks just to minimize uh, helium losses. And in this case, the GFR fleet would be much, much less dependent on the helium market in the world. And of course, we have not to not forget the uh, severe accidents and uh, uh, provide uh, uh, data on the material interactions uh, in case of melting of the fuel and structural materials. We have we have. Uh, facilities in Czech Republic, a cold crucible where we can reach large high temperatures, we can melt uh, oxide fuel elements with the structural materials and observe uh, the behavior of these uh, couples. Uh, I'm approaching really to the end of the presentation. Here uh, you see the <clears throat> helium loop as Allegro in the Czech Republic, which uh, I expect will start to provide data this year, which is uh, which will be built in two phases. Now we have the phase one available, uh, which is characterized with one primary loop and and one DHR loop in the future, we should have the configuration mirroring the, the uh, uh, Allegro CA2009 concept with the same parameters as, in, as expected in Allegro. Here you see the configuration which we expect we will reach in the future. This is a very simple but already uh, operating loop in Slovak Republic dedicated to studies in natural circulation. Heating a section, uh, uh, then rising coaxial uh, piping, uh, no, rising, rising piping to the water-cooled heat exchanger and uh, down back 
to the heating heated section. Uh, this will, with the maximum temperature around 500 degrees C, this will allow us to master the knowledge on the natural circulation. Here you see the R&D elements which we uh, uh, have uh, for studies of the helium recovery from the gas vessel at atmosphere. Today we are working on a small scale facility to demonstrate that we would be able to, uh, to recover the leaked helium from the uh, nitrogen helium atmosphere by either membrane or another technology. Uh, here is uh, shown the cold crucible available, available in the research center Rež in Czech Centrum Výzkumu, CV Rež in Czech Republic. Uh, the last two slides which would conclude the webinar on Allegro. I would like to stress the following uh, uh, points. Uh, the sodium cooled uh, technology uh, is well known in the world. Sodium cooled fast reactors were and are operated in the world but helium-cooled fast reactors don't exist and we are still in the face of proving its feasibility and safety, passive safety uh, today. <clears throat> uh, the French concept is a good technical base which must be further improved and uh, we are working on proving its technical feasibility from any, any aspect. And we are trying to assure the target mission of the demonstrator. It means to be safe uh, and uh, uh, providing the characteristics which were mentioned uh, in the beginning of the webinar concerning the fuel, uh, irradiation characteristics, safety framework, and so on. We have a, a private person, the Umbrella the Association, which was established uh, six years ago in Slovakia, the V4G4 Center of Excellence, uh, which uh, had all two uh, uh, it has no financial resources. The members uh, uh, have through either national uh, research programs or uh, Euratom funded research. The short term priorities are focused on the uh, uh, passive safety and uh, Meanwhile, we are trying to prove uh, feasibility of uh, UOX-based driver core to uh, uh, provide Allegro with this type of fuel when MOX, if MOX uh, would be not uh, 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 either possible or allowed in Central Europe. Uh, the short-term priorities are listed here and they uh, uh, concern the coolability issues mainly in protected transients uh, using passive systems, feasibility of the guard vessel and uh, all the associated uh, uh, issues, minimization of the uh, well, local resistances in the DHR system, valves uh, and so on, turbo machinery uh, when required for this moment. It seems 
that the turbo, turbo machinery might not be needed as a safety qualified system, but only for generation of electricity when needed. We are still looking for some alternative cladding material for the driver core fuel elements, uh, but as this would require an extensive R&D, we are trying to make Allegro safety uh, for this uh, for these conditions, uh, uh, trying to maximize the efficiency of the uh, uh, safety systems. Of course, as mentioned already, uh, the computational uh, uh, tools have to be uh, either uh, benchmarked, validated, or uh, development must be uh, assured in the case uh, where the uh, current tools uh, are not able to touch the, either the design or conditions. I mean, refractory fuel, for example, from the point of view of core degradation and, and so on. In this, at this moment, I would like to conclude the uh, webinar. Thank you very much for attention. And uh, I, uh, I uh, uh, would like to encourage you to ask questions. I will do my best to uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you, Dr. Bolofsky. If you have questions for today's presenter, please go ahead and type those into the uh, Q&A pod now, and we'll take as many as we have time for. While those questions are coming in, uh, let's take a quick look at the upcoming webinars. In April, a presentation on European sodium fast reactor and introduction. In May, a formulation of alternative cement matrix for solidification stabilization of nuclear waste. And in June, a presentation on the interaction, JOG sodium in case of a clad breach in sodium fast reactor.